Hi there. So in this last piece on combining errors, uh, what we're doing here is thinking about how we combine errors together, uncertainties together. So if we have a formula um, with some variables in it and we know the uncertainty needs to the variables, what's the uncertainty in the answer to the formula? Uh, and that'll get you going for the lab until we come back to it again later in the lecture course. So say I've got a cylinder. I've got a cylinder here and it's got a diameter uh, of D, say, it's got a height here of H. What's its volume? Well, its volume is going to be um, the area of this circle, which is pi D squared over 4, that is pi R squared, um, D is 2R, um, uh, times the height. Uh, and my question is, what's the uncertainty going to be in the volume if I know the uncertainty in the diameter and the height? Um, so we need some, some rules at this stage. And say we have some variables, uh, take some variables, A, B, C, whatever, and their uncertainties, sigma A, sigma B, sigma C, dot, 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 whatever those are. Then if we have a function where the uh, variables add, then the uncertainties will add. So for plus or minus, then the absolute values of the uncertainties add, of the uncertainties add. And for division and multiplication, then the fractional values add, uh, by which I mean fractional being sigma a over a and the absolute value being just sigma a, for instance. So let's think of an example. If I have a function, let's call it a function f of variables a and b, and let's say it's equal to a plus b, then the uncertainty in f would be the uncertainty in a Oop, the uncertainty in A plus the uncertainty in B. So uh, say I'm, I'm, I've measured two lengths, 5 millimetres and 3 millimetres, the uncertainty in each of them is 0.1, the uncertainty in adding them together would be 0.2. If, on the other hand, I've got a function f, which is of A and B, which is equal to A times B, then the uncertainty in f divided by f, the fractional uncertainty in f, will be equal to the fractional uncertainty in A plus the fractional uncertainty in B. And so when I multiply it by F, which is AB, what I'll get is that the uncertainty in F is equal to sigma A times B, because I'll multiply this all by AB when I multiply it by F. And then the A's there will cancel. I'll get sigma A times B plus sigma B times A. Okay? Which is not so obvious. That's, that's interesting. Okay, now what if I had a, another function, let's call it g, is equal to a, b plus a third variable, c. Well, the uncertainty in g is now going to be the uncertainty in the function a, b, which was f, plus the uncertainty in c. So that's equal to sigma a sigma a times b plus sigma b times a plus sigma c. And you see dimensionally, if this was, uh, this was millimetres and seconds, this must be millimetres times seconds, this must have the unit of millimetres times seconds as well. And then this will all work, right? This will have an uncertainty in millimetres, b is in seconds, this will have an uncertainty in seconds, that's in millimetres, so all the terms still have the same correct units. So that's how we combine them together. So if I have, uh, it's the other thing I can think about. What if I have a function of, uh, let's call this a, a function h, uh, which is a function only of a and is equal to a squared. Well, that's equal to a times a. So the uncertainty in h we can write down just by making them both a in my equation for f, which was a times a, uh, a times b. If b was equal to a, well, we just put 
a into each of those, so that'll be sigma a times a plus sigma a times a, which will be twice sigma a times a. And that looks a bit like differentiation. When I differentiate it, I get 2a times the differential of the thing in the bracket of the squared. Ah, yeah, okay. So that tells us something about what's going on here. It is just like differentiation, which is what we'll find out later in the lecture course. Um, returning to our, our cylinder here, well, what we've got here is the volume is equal to pi by 4 times d squared h. And then the uncertainty in the volume will be pi by 4. Um, and uh, then, now we've got d squared um, as one term here and h. And they, those fractional uncertainties are going to add. The uncertainty in d squared, we just said, was 2 uncertainty in d uh, times d. That's the uncertainty in d squared, and when we multiply it, we'll need to have an h here. And then, uh, and you've got to work all this through, I'm just sort of going quickly here. And the uncertainty in h, um, just sigma h, and I've got to multiply that by the d squared term here. So that's my uncertainty for the uncertainty in the volume. And again, you can see it all dimensionally works out. If these things are all in millimetres, I've still got a thing that's in millimetres cubed. Okay, now, briefly give me a second and we'll do an example or two um, and think about or an example and then a comment, but I first need to wipe the board. So, what we need to do is think about an example. So, here's an example which we meet in 104 Lecture 1. Here's my tensile test piece again. And it's got a diameter here, and if I want to find the stress, I need to divide the force by the area. So I need to know the area of this thing. And we said back at, in the thing on the piece on measuring uncertainties that the diameter was equal to 6.77 plus or minus 0.2 millimeters. Now here I'm using the uncertainty in the measurements, not the uncertainty in the mean, um, because uh, so I'd measured 10 different ones, and that was the uncertainty in uh, the population, not the uncertainty in the mean. Um, you want to use the uncertainty in the mean, say if you've measured 1,000 water bottles, you want to know how much water you need to use, you need to know the average water bottle's volume. Um, you want to use the uncertainty in the mean uh, if you've taken 10 measurements of the same sample, like we did when we measured this one, and we want to average them out. If you've measured 10 different samples, and you want to know what the next one's variability is going to be like from a population, then you want to use that uncertainty there, that bigger one. <laughs> and the area now of that sample is equal to be pi over 4 times d squared. Um, and so that, when you work it out, that's 35.997 millimetres. Now, the uncertainty in the area is going to be uh, pi by 4 times um, uh, d times d, and the uncertainty in d times d is sigma d times d plus sigma d times d, so it's times two of those. So that's equal to pi by 2 um, sigma d times d. And that, when you work it out, is 0.21 millimetres squared. So I would say that the area now, I've got an uncertainty of 0.2, so I'm going to round to that figure. So I've got 35.99, so that's going to round that up to zero, so it's going to be 36.0 plus or minus 0.2 millimetres squared. And that's a correct statement of the uncertainty. Just to, as an observation, if I say the uncertainty in D divided by D, there's a fractional uncertainty, that's a fractional uncertainty of 3 times 10 to the minus 3. And if I work out this fractional uncertainty, the uncertainty in A divided by A, once I've rounded it, that's 6 times 10 to the minus 3. That is, you've got... Uh, d times d of it, 
So the fractional uncertainties in D add, there's two of them twice when I multiply it together. So the fractional uncertainties doubled in magnitude. Okay, now, last thing. We need to have a little conversation about how to write down units. Now, here's something somebody said to me once. I was talking about a speed at which we were making a weld. And I said that we had welded at a speed of 1.5 millimeters per second. Okay, now he then said, what was your welding speed? And I said, one and a half millimeters per second, that's what it says. And he said, how do I know that you didn't mean meters per millisecond? Which would be a million times faster. <laughs> okay, and the answer, what he was saying to me was, that you should have a space between each group of units and between the number, you have a little space there and a little bit space there so that you know that we're talking about millimetres per second, not metres per millisecond. Okay, And that's the correct way to do it in SI. You could also go 1.5 millimetres per second. The problem with doing that is that if you've got a more complicated unit, I don't know, um, 1.5 millimetres per second per kilogram. I don't know what that would be. But then it's a bit unclear, is that millimetres over S times kg? Or is that millimetres over S all over kg? which would be equal to millimetres times kg over s. Hmm, okay. So you can do that in SI, and actually that means this. But to me, it's unclear. So I prefer using the minus ones, minus twos, etc., and then it's all clear. Um, but either is okay in SI, but you do still need to have the little spaces or a dash to indicate the differences between the types of units you're using, and then you can avoid that confusion. Okay, so that's it on writing down numbers with an appropriate uncertainty and how to combine them. And that should equip you, hopefully, for the labs. The last little thing to say is that if you're drawing a graph, this is my third example, and you're drawing a straight line, say you have a graph y, x, and you're putting a straight line, y equals mx plus c, and the gradient of the straight line is m, and you've put that through some data with some error bars. Maybe there's one here, maybe there's one there, something like that. How do you know the uncertainty in m? Well, for now, when you draw it freehand, what you should do is ask what sort of error, what sort of gradient can I reasonably put through it with a freehand guide? Uh, a freehand estimate. And that actually won't be too bad. And ask yourself what the minimum maximum gradient you can get is, and then generate an uncertainty plus minus in the gradient. Um, later in the course, we'll do a more rigorous way to estimate M mathematically and its uncertainty, and then we'll be able to do, that, do a better job of that. Um, but for now, estimate M, but the error in M, by seeing what you can reasonably achieve with your ruler and an eye. But then, if you are asked to interpolate to an additional point and get an uncertainty, say, for a point here that you've interpolated at this value of x, and you want to know what that is and what its uncertainty is, once you have an uncertainty for m, you know what the x you're asking is, and you know the c, uh, the uncertainty in c, because you can estimate that as well for the intercept. x is the thing you're aiming, so it, it, it has no uncertainty because you're being asked the question of what is the value of y at that x point. If you know the uncertainty in N, the uncertainty in C, you can then, using these equations, generate an uncertainty in your estimate Y uh, that you're interpolating, and that will be safe. Um, so that's what you do for handling errors, and hopefully that equips you and means that you're happy with those. But we'll look at it in Thursday's class and then see how we go from there. So see you then.